Hi everyone and welcome to this video guideline around discussion guidelines in this course. So uh, discussions in this course take or accumulate for 15 percent of your grade and there are discussions for every week within the course and the expectations around discussions is that if you're participating in them, if you're doing the online portion of the course, you'll have one direct response to whatever the prompt is, and three peer responses, that is, responses to what other people have said. So that's a total of four posts. One that you're directly responding to, giving your own view, take, unique understanding of, and then three to your peers. Uh, each prompt is based upon the online lecture videos for that week, so the expectation is that you have watched the videos and now are basing your response, your direct response, between what the prompt is asking and what those online videos had to say. A sufficient response shows comprehension of the points that the instructor is making in the weekly lecture while also being able to apply or discuss one or more of the works that they read that week. So for this, based, based upon the prompt in the online videos, the, the student is going to want to create a, a substantive response, um, kind of taking those in and applying it to the readings that he or she read that week. Now, the purpose of this is really to utilize the course information ideas and concepts and apply them to the particular readings that the student has read that week. That means the student does not necessarily have to read the text that the instructor discusses in that we in those lecture videos, but should be able but should be reading their reading sufficiently enough to connect to the points that the instructor is making in asking about. All right, to break this down, it's basically as the instructor, I provide these videos that are focused on specific works. You as a student are going to want to look at how I analyze, critique, and talk about that work and take those ideas, take that approach, and do so with your own readings that week, if it isn't the reading that I'm, I'm discussing. If it is the reading, then you're going to want to kind of move further with it or um, kind of pick up where I left off or discuss it, you know, discuss some additional elements of it. So that's really, it's this kind of, here's the instructor, he, he's provided you with um, this understanding about this particular work and he wants you to take that particular approach and use it with your other readings and write about that. That's the, the gist. And then as you read your peer responses and reply to those, you'll want to enhance the conversation, take it further, ask more questions, or provide your own interpretation. So each module discussions, um, you have that direct discussion, which is required, and you have that one response, uh, your one post responding to the prompt. These are typically due Thursday, or they're due by Thursday, but by all means, get those in earlier. It saves you, you know, having to wait or anything like that. Get it out as soon as you can um, so that you're not waiting to the deadline. The post should be 200 words, must be 200 words, um, but it's recommended that you go over, so don't just go to word 200 and then stop. And also remember, that's 200 of your own words. That doesn't include, that should not include quotes. Your responses to your peers' thoughts, those are due by Sunday of a given week, and those should be at least 100 words or more. Again, quotes don't count, and they should be, you know, have substantive value or, or further development of the discussion. So it's a total of four responses. Each week there is an open discussion, um, or there's an open discussion available. This is purely optional, and it's, you know, anybody can participate, whether you're doing the face-to-face -face or online class. Um, and it, sh it should really consist of anything related to the module of that week. So maybe it's something that hasn't come up either in the discussion or on the blog or in the class, and you want to make note of it. And participating in the open discussion will always be better beneficial to the student, um, but it won't be detrimental if you don't participate. That is, if you participate in the open discussion, that will ultimately be beneficial and, you know, account for something within your grade positively. If you don't participate, you won't be penalized. 
Alright, so the goal is to apply the course material of the module in a meaningful and specific way. Keep in mind, students should students looking to get full credit uh, will provide initial responses that do the following. They move beyond the course material in instructor's points, so they say more than rehashing what I've said. They use ideas, concepts, and materials that aren't already covered by peers, so they're aware of the discussion that's going on and don't just say what everybody else has said. They clearly and critically discuss one of the readings and how it relates to the prompt. Um, students are encouraged to use external material when relevant, um, but this should be supplemental to the students' discussion. In terms of responding to peers, this should come in the form of further extending and developing their peers' point, or in challenging, respectfully mind you, uh, the way the, peers has the, the peer has presented his or her argument. So again, here, it's, it's you're really looking to extend and, and actually engage in meaningful conversation, not just the, the, uh, the response, wow, that was really interesting, but provide some really good in-depth in um, thoughts about the writing. So when posting, um, prior to responding to the prompt, make sure that you've done the, uh, done the required readings and viewed the course lecture of the week, and maybe even if there's supplemental material, check that out for the week. I would recommend that you write or type out your experience uh, in reading and watching and listening to the course material. Uh, really think about what stuck out for you, what are the important things, and this shouldn't be in your your post, this should be outside of that, kind of drawing up notes and things so that that means when you do go to post you have some more, you have some material already created that you could possibly use. Um, brainstorm different thoughts about the discussion question. Don't just go right into it and answer it immediately. Actually think about what different approaches you could use. Uh, and when you do compose a response, make sure you compose it initially in a word processor like Microsoft Word uh, so that you can sufficiently edit it, uh, spell check, grammar check, and revise it before posting. Also, if for any reason you're kicked out of Angel while composing it in the discussion, you'll still have it there in the document. All right, so what is a substantial discussion uh, question response? It's direct reference to one of the readings as well as other course materials or supplemental materials and includes citations. Uh, uses key terms, ideas, and concepts from the course readings and lectures. Develops the discussion further, doesn't just repeat what's been said. Exceeds 200 words. Clearly and grammatically correct prose. Clear and grammatically correct prose. Um, and if the instructor asks a direct question of the student, the student will not receive credit for response unless he or she responds to the instructor's direct question. So what this means is you may post your, um, your response to the, the discussion prompt. I, as the instructor, might go in and ask you for clarification or f about a specific point. I, and when I do that, I will use your particular name. I'll say, okay, Joe, I, I'll reply to, to Joe and I'll say, Joe, um, can you please explain X, Y, and Z about your, your post? If the, if the student doesn't respond to that, he or she won't get full credit for the discussion that week because that's me asking for clarification because something that's been said isn't clear or is confusing. It's really me giving you an opportunity to make sure your post is as, has all the needed information and ideas present. So what makes good uh, for good student response? Um, the responder acknowledges the student's points. The responder elaborates on the student's points by connecting the student's points to other facets of American literature, or other course materials and concepts. The responder pushes the discussion further with complex questions, questions that require more than simple answers. You know, this is where you want to think about really getting into the meat of things, not just saying, well, would, did you like the character, but what problems did you find with the character given what happened? You know, you're looking for complex questioning. The responder, the responder exceeds the hundred word, the hundred word, hundred word word count. 
um, clear and grammatically correct prose and the responder has spread out his responses over several days and not posted all of them on the last day of the discussion. All right, so this is a discussion and in order for it to be a discussion you should be coming back and regularly interacting. It shouldn't be you come on Sunday and just quickly find responses. I would also encourage responders to spread out their responses to different people, not just in a given week, but week by week. Um, the, pr the, the responder provides a range of responses to peers and doesn't just say the same thing three times to three different classmates. So that's the other thing that I'm looking at is you should be saying different things. It shouldn't just be repeating the same thing three times. All right, that is the guidelines for discussion. Please let me know if you have questions, and I will see you later.